All right. It's working. I'm in Rotterdam at the moment. You can read behind me. Oh, that's Rotterdam Central Station. And um, you can see some other buildings over here. And what I'm going to do now, I'll basically walk around making this vlog here. Uh, I wanted to go to another city in the Netherlands today. It's, it's a bit of a remote village basically, but you know, I missed my train, I had some delays, so I decided I can go there tomorrow also. Well, I don't know, maybe there were some demons fighting me, resisting me from coming there, or maybe the Lord decided um, that I have to go another direction. I don't care. You know, everything works out for my good anyway, so there's no reason for me to fear. Well, guys, so you can see me well? Yes. Hold on, hold on. Yes. Listen carefully. I've made videos in which I've talked about prayer. And the last time I made a video in which I've explained the power of prayer. And I explained why especially pagans have such a trouble with Christian prayer. Because listen, um, what you guys are doing uh, in those churches, you know, our Father who art in heaven and all of that, or bending your, closing your eyes, bending your hands, and me giving a petition, you see. Okay, I understand what you guys are doing, okay? I'm not condemning you, I'm not criticizing you. What I'm just saying is that, listen, the Our Father, the Art in Heaven, Our Father prayers is, is a model prayer. It's just to teach us what our, our focus should be, okay? It's not something you have to repeat over and over again, okay? For example, the Psalms also. Some of the Psalms are also examples of how you can praise, how you can pray, okay? They are not meant to be repeated as a ritual over and over again. But many of you, dear Christians, you didn't knew any better. Why? Because you were deceived. Because even in your deceived state, you still have an impact, you see? And pagans, people who worship demons, because even if they don't know demons exist, when you're a pagan, you're worshipping devils, okay? People who worship demons, whether they know it or not, they are quite frightened of Christians praying. Yes, they are. And I'll explain, I've already explained why, but I'm going further into it. When you, dear Christian, begin to pray, you know, the boundaries that are established around you will be threatened. You see? For example, um, I'm just giving illustrations now. Um, I'm not, these illustrations, I made them up, but they serve to teach you something. For example, um, this hotel behind me here, as you can see. It's a business, alright? And there are people working over there. There are people staying over there, or else, if there were no customers to business, it, they would get out of business. Or let's say you have the the, the national national Nederlanden. Those are those who build uh, huge buildings behind me. Well, huge, huge for the Netherlands. You don't have any skyscrapers around here, like you have in Japan, Korea, and and all, and, all, and those other countries. What I'm trying to say is that those institutions, many of them have witch coffins or witch doctors behind them. See? And those evil spirits, they're not harming anyone, but they're basically telepathically manipulating people around to visit those businesses. You see? So when, you, when it comes down to it, the only reason why those institutions or businesses are in operation is because of the shadow witchcraft that is that they, they are practicing. Okay? If you're a customer 
and you buy something, it does not mean that you're bewitched, okay? So if you, have, if you have a restaurant and you want to go out with your friends, you can go to the restaurant, okay? If you are staying at a hotel, you can stay at an hotel, okay? So if they are involved in any kind of shadow witchcraft, it's their problem. They have to deal with the consequences. But just be aware of it. Many of those institutions and many of those businesses, they use shadow witchcraft. And what does this have to do with prayer? Hold on. Those businesses and those institutions, they, they are dependent on the ignorance of the population to remain in, to remain to remain to operate. Because the moment people become aware of such stuff, their income is endangered. So what you what you will have is that in a city, for example, I'm in Rotterdam now, as you can clearly see, you will have certain secret societies that come together and what you basically have is you have those business owners who are involved in shadow witchcraft they go to certain ceremonies often it's some it's often in the weekend because just like churches have their services in during the weekend or some on saturday as it's supposed to be but many on sunday anyway the same way you have pagans also having their celebrations during the weekend and what they basically are doing is they are bringing animal sacrifices or they're performing all those strange um, rituals, those perverse sexual rituals, do all of those things to, uh, to contain negativity around them because those spirits need negativity in order to operate. And from time to time they will practice also sacrifices. And uh, the thing is, they come together and they will discuss with each other who is a threat to their businesses which are their income. They're not worried about robbers, they're not worried about criminals. They're not. What they are worried about is spiritually delighted people. So you don't even have to be a Christian. If you're just someone with an open eye to see things that others can't see, you are a threat to them because you you are a when people's eyes are opened, that they're being used by uh, unseen forces, then trouble will happen in those institutions, those businesses. They'll either go bankrupt or, you know, total chaos will, um, will take place. Because remember, many of those businesses and institutions, they use intimidation, violence, and all kinds of uh, tricks to um, scam people in order to get what they want, you know, you see, we live in the, we live in reality, folks, so I'm being real here. So when you have a spiritual open eye, you are a danger for the establishment, you see, and that's why when you, when people notice that you have a kind of intelligence to notice things, they'll begin to target you, you see, and it can be, for example, that you were, a, when you were a teenager, you a little bit further here. When you were a teenager, for example, you were bullied in high school. You see, and you were asking you were asking yourself why were you targeted to being bullied? And you might think, well, those kids were just yet low self-esteem, or you may think those people they were just out of their minds. That can be true. Or maybe you had a bad attitude and people didn't like it. Okay, that can be true also. But what you don't know is that at that high school, one of those teachers is, in, is uh, inaugurated in a witch coffin. Or she's inaugurated in some uh, congregation of witches. And she, at the job, is basically um, practicing divination upon those pupils in that high school. And she noticed that you have an, a certain amount of intelligence to, to see through what's going on in the spiritual. So she then talks about you in her, the witch congregation or the witch coven. And then they over there decide that, okay, uh, this guy or this girl, you see, they have a certain amount of intelligence. Well, we need to prevent this individual from becoming a, a real threat to us. So there are basically two things they will do. First, they will um, cause 
they will try to make your life miserable so that you become receptive to negative energy. You see, because when, you're, when you have negative energy around you and in your life, evil spirits can easily walk in and out of your life. And I'm not saying you're becoming possessed, that they're, they're entering inside of you, no. But when you have negative energy and you have, a, and you have a bitter attitude because of what people have done to you, evil spirits can come in and out of your life. Okay? That's one. The second thing that they will do is, after a while that you are being bullied, because that witch will put spells upon those other kids to tar so that to turn negative attention towards you. When that has happened, then they will try uh, some of those, they will send other witches on your path to befriend you. Because first they target you, then will try to befriend you to win your confidence. And then two things can happen. Either they will kill you, literally, they will send some assassin after you, or they will initiate you. Now, an initiation can happen in diverse manners. It can happen without you knowing it. They can place a strong spell upon you and perform a ritual upon, upon you without you knowing it. And you're, without being aware of it, you're giving consent to a satanic contract and you are inaugurated. So even if you're not, you know, directly involved with their practices, you're sti you still have become an ancient for them, you see? Or they inaugurate you by telling you the truth, what's going on, but they won't tell you that they've targeted you, but they will tell you um, that you can get power, you can get an easy life. They will begin to, how do I say it, they will begin to promise you stuff in order to lure you in. And they will do it stop subtly. They're not going to tell you, listen, we are pagans, we worship evil spirits, who are also called Greek gods, Roman gods, and some of us are even um, sold out to Satan, and we are fighting against the Most High, and against God's people, and against the Bible. That, they, often they won't do that. Sometimes you will do, some people will do that to you. If they see that you are already embittered against God because of what has happened to you during your life. But often they will just, how do I say it? They will try to give you certain hints, certain tips, how you, what you can do, certain psychological tricks you can use on people just to get certain results. And little by little you will become more interested, you want to know more and more. And before you know it, you yourself want to be inaugurated wants to be initiated you see because they know very well that if you if you have a certain amount of intelligence to notice things you can infect others with that intelligence also and if you have the awareness to realize what's going on behind the scenes then you can also easily discern that you know the Bible is true and when this happens, and you choose to follow God, when you become born again, they can't do anything anymore, because they can't undo your salvation. But once you're born again, and once you begin to read the Bible, man, you can be, you will basically tear down their kingdom, tear down their private lives, tear down their uh, mental constructions, you see. So, they will either try to win you over, or they'll systematically destroy you, so that they can move on with their selfish, self-centered lifestyle. And if you're all, all already a Christian, if you're already born again, they will try to um, attach themselves to you so that they will, by deceiving you, so that you will support them without knowing it. That's why you have a lot of Christians who are also supporters of, supporters of gay rights, for example something that's incompatible with scripture, incompatible with Jesus Christ, but they do it because they are so deceived. You see, you know, pagans cannot undo their salvation, but pagans can attach themselves, themselves to them in an unhealthy manner, so they will support their cause. So, I was making this video about, you know, the facts and power of prayer. Now you understand why there is so much emphasis on you know, discrediting the Bible, upon discrediting prayer, and upon basically um, 
bashing and lashing out against people who um, show any form of trust in prayer because you may not be aware of the power of prayer. Many, many don't. Those pagans know it. And even if people, if some, if some people are not pagans, they're just atheists or they're just wandering through life without really bothering with anything, when you begin to pray, some of them, if they, if they look a little bit further, they will recognize that your prayers have an impact. You see? That's why scripture makes clear you have to pray all the time. Prayer should be your lifestyle. Prayer should not be something you do at church every Sunday or every Saturday and you sing some songs of praises and the rest of the week you're basically following the advices and programs of the devil. No. Prayer should be your lifestyle. You see? You understand this, those pagans, they've made paganism their lifestyle. Witchcraft, wizardry, sorcery is their lifestyle. And it's becoming who they are. Okay? Those, the same way, when you are born again, you need to pray all the time, you need to fast all the time. It should be your lifestyle, okay? You sh it should be something you're doing. So, before you leave your house, you just praise the Lord and thank Him for this day. You plead the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ on your way, and you release the all-consuming fire of the Holy Spirit upon everyone who wants to ha harm you, both demons as human beings. It's just stuff. You see, many Christians just go through their day you see, without praying, without fasting, and when things begin to happen, then now they're going to search for the Lord. No, 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 no. It's now how it works, people. You see, to follow Christ means to walk in the Spirit. That means that being spiritual is who you are. Okay, not something you're doing. And I'm spending a lot of time now here in Rotterdam, in the public space, making this video with my selfie stick. And I don't care at all what people think about me or that they laugh at me. That's their issue. I'm here for the kingdom of God and I'm telling you the truth. If you, I'm talking to you Christians, I'm not talking to pagans or to other unbelievers. Though. If you are Christian but you are not praying, you're not reading the Bible, and you're not, you have a mindset of self-gratification, shame. No, I'm not going to say shame on you. Forgive me, Father, because shame is not from God. But I do want to tell you is, grow up. Seriously, you need to grow up. I'm not saying shame on you, because shame is not from God, guilt is not from God. I want you to be free. Okay, so grow up and walk in the Spirit. Have faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So, for example, I know this guy, I won't call any names here because it's not needed. He is a youth pastor at a local at a church. It's a, it's a small congregation. That guy, he is 21 years old. He's just he just graduated college, but for a few years he's been a youth pastor. However, he does not read the Bible. He has almost zero knowledge of what's written in that book. He also does not pray. Even a minute, I often don't even pray. But he does listen a lot to secular music. He does watch a lot of secular TV shows. And he does listen to a lot of pagan advice. And I'm thinking, hold on a minute. Hold on. You are a youth pastor. And you have ambitions to grow, to be a leader. Now I'm thinking, hold, hold on, hold on, hold, hold on. To be a leader means you need to be spiritual. Because every human is a spiritual being with a soul living in the body. That's what a human is. So you need to be spiritual and have spiritual, spiritual insight before you can become a leader. And either you are attached to the demonic realm and you will, and demons will use your leadership to impact people's lives, or you are walking in the Spirit with the, whole, with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus and you are a blessing to others and you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. It's one of the two. But how can you claim? To follow God, to follow Christ, and you want to be a leader in the kingdom of God, but you're not reading his book. You're not looking for his will. Man, if you're such a Christian, you need to repent. Not, you not, not repent to be saved because you're already saved, but repent because it's not natural for your living. Well, it's, quite, it's a bit quiet here. It's still morning. It's not even 12 o'clock yet. I'm going to upload this video somewhere around here and then I'm going to, to get some lunch 
And before I close this video, I'm going to repeat something here. Prayer is very powerful and it has consequences. And remember, even if you, you are not a Christian, the moment you receive a certain amount of intelligence, witches are going to target you. Um, wizards are going to target you. And you have many undercover witches and wizards around you. They can be a school teacher, it can be someone at the fitness club, it can be one of those restaurant owners, or it can be a classmate with you at school, or a, a student mate at college, you see. You have a lot of people who covertly are into witchcraft, you see. And they may not be people with ill intentions, however, if you're involved in witchcraft, you're still involved in witchcraft, and you're still an ancient. To, because when someone unknowingly is practicing witchcraft, when they they have adopt, adopted a mindset, a witchy mindset. So every time they notice that you have a certain intelligence, but it, it does not, it's not in harmony with their mental construction, they will see you as a threat, they begin to talk about you. And because they begin to talk about you, others who are real initiated witches, they will notice it. And they will think, hmm, about whom are you talking? Let me see who that guy is, who that girl is. So, you need to pray. And if you're not saved, you need to get saved because if you're not saved, then uh, you're doomed. Well, that being said, y'all, this is enough for now. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and be at peace.